actually. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chakse, who is um, with ACMC, and I thought this was going to be interesting, a uh, very interesting interview, because we're talking about allergies and stuff. Sure. What's going on? Mm -hmm. You look different this time, so you shaved. Yeah, right, that's true. You know? <laughs> I had the winter look and now I have the summer look. <laughs> um, Doc, uh, you know, um, you, you cover a lot of different uh, conditions <clears throat> out there. Sure, sure. And um, are you, do you come into ACMC what, once a week or <clears throat> once a month? Or? No, no, I come. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit what I do. Um, so I, I am a specialist for allergy, asthma, and immunology. That's the branch. Okay. So it's a wide range branch. It covers all ages. I like to say womb to tomb. Babies to any age, mm -hmm. so we cover that. And um, I'm certified by the uh, by the necessary credential for that by the board and academy with that. And um, uh, what I do is a lot of conditions. Okay, so typically what people think is allergy is hay fever, and hay fever uh, is a garden variety tree, grass, cat, dog allergy, mm -hmm. but Outside that, there is also a um, uh, variety of other allergies like food, there's allergies to medications, there are allergies to um, uh, skin, okay, so you can break out with rash and other things, uh, and bee sting allergy, insect bite allergy, so there's a lot of these things which, uh, which are covered and people don't think about that. Yeah. So I came from Cleveland, I used to be in teaching hospitals before, I've served 10 years uh, actually 11 and a half years in downtown Cleveland in ma major teaching hospitals mm -hmm. and then I come here so I'm actually full-time here at ACMC I'm not coming once a month oh uh, so okay. I'm coming three days a week okay Mondays Wednesdays and Thursdays I got you. Uh, those are three days I'm here and I'm here all days uh, full days a full day yeah morning to evening so uh, how is it now you know I, I noticed in the last Four to six weeks, I've been having a little bit of an allergy problem. Sure. Um, are you? Is, is it keeping you busy now? Oh, definitely, definitely. And um, um, you know, this is this is the prime time for allergies. So they, everything is up in the air. You know, so the grass is being cut. Right. You have blossoming and blooming, and on top it's raining too much. The more it rains, more the vegetations will pop up, and more allergens there will be. So I always thought the rain took it away. No, no, no. It actually makes it uh, worse in okay. two, two manners. First, it fertilizes, you know, water is good for the plants. Mm -hmm. So it blooms, blossoms very well. Secondly, what it does, it makes humidity higher. And with that, what it does, it brings the mold on top. So then you have problem not only with pollens, but also with the molds. Okay. And when it is more humid and high, the pollen count is much more contained in the very close layers to the earth, so you actually get hit with that. But if it is bright and sunny, it will go out and about, but when it is rains and drizzles, it's kind of like that. Okay, okay. So, so it does that. You mentioned um, bee stings. Yeah. That, now is the time of year where that happens. Um, and there are people that are deathly uh, allergic to bee stings. They are, and uh, you, you say very correctly, a um, lot of doctors won't know this either. Uh, bee sting allergy, we have the best injections with cure rate of more than 95% for the bee sting allergy. That is better than allergy injection for pollens or cat and dog which have cure rate of around 80%. So bee sting allergy, if you have it, people will just say, well, you know, you cannot do it. Say It's a act of God, so to say, and you cannot do anything about it, but that's not true. A lot of people who, who work outdoors, younger males, who have job climbing up and down, cutting trees and those things. There's been a lot of research gone and done in it, and the common medical observation is that people who are young and fit, and who are death on arrival to the emergency room, uh -huh. likely in the summer months, spring through fall, likely have anaphylaxis or life-threatening allergic reaction after bee sting. And then they, because Otherwise, they are perfectly healthy. Boom, they come, they're working there, no electrocution, nothing, and all of a sudden they faint. So that has been thought to be because of the bee sting allergies. It's commonly ignored, and a lot of people don't think it could be done, which I want to let the audience know it's very effective treatment for it. You also mentioned something that kind of affects me, and I, that's why I kind of want to talk yeah. about it a little bit. But 
Um, I have a, a, a little bit of a seafood allergy. Now, I'm on medications that I can eat seafood, but I can't eat, one I can't eat is mussels. Highly allergic to mussels for some reason. I can eat lobster, I can eat uh, shrimp or scallops. It doesn't seem to bother me if I take my medication. Otherwise, I'll get the gout. Well, uh, what know. medication do you take for I take seafood? allopurinol. Allopurinol. And what does that to do with the seafood? Allergy. It keeps me from the gout. Um, yeah, that is a medicine for the gout. Yeah. But nothing to do with the seafood. In fact, when I take that medicine, and I only take one pill <laughs> a day, um, I'm fine. I, I'm, I, don't, I haven't had a gout problem in probably six years. Sure, sure. I mean, gout is totally different in allopurinol, but even here, you know, you talk to a lot of medical professionals on your, in your job mm. and over reporting over years. Um, there is no cure for seafood allergy. No. Or food allergy in general. Really? So people out there like you, you're a very good example. Okay? You say that you know mollusks cause you or you know muscles cause you problem. Mm. But you can eat lobster and shrimp and other things. Mm. That's good and that's very out in the air that you're a very open target for these. Because when you eat food, your eyes know what you ate, but your gut doesn't know what you mm -hmm. ate. And the way we break down the food and absorb it, it's the protein in the food which causes you allergies. So your immune system will see a refined molecule of, let's say, lobster you ate. Mm -hmm. uh, not what you ate, but only one part of it. All the shellfish that belongs to shellfish, get right, right. they all are very close cousins. So to body, they look same. So body cannot distinguish many times that you ate shrimp or you ate clams. It will may look similar and there's something we call cross-reactivity. So one of these days you may, you may have an allergic reaction although you think you can eat one. So it's actually not good if you're allergic to shellfish. Mm -hmm best and safest medical advice to be had is to avoid all seafood. Is that right? Yep. All the shellfish because body, one of these days you'll be tricked. Another thing people don't realize that, okay, you think you're okay with lobster and you're not okay with clams or mussels or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Now when you harvest those things from the sea, they come together. It's not that you're only catching lobster oh. and no clams. Yeah. So what happens is when they harvest it, you have a big bucket of things mm -hmm. and they pile in the ship and on the truck to the shipping market. And the clam may be sitting on top of the lobster for one, two, three days or four, however long. And the juice or the sap, after they get killed, loses out from them and goes to the next person down because of the gravity. So your lobster may have absorbed the sap from other food and you think you're eating lobster, but it is contaminated, if you will, with yeah. that. Yeah, I see. And then, you know, there's a lot of people I see that, you know, who will have this reaction. So I think if you truly have a severe reaction, which results in a skin rash, swelling of the mouth, eyes, tongue, lips, difficulty breathing, mm -hmm. uh, then I think you, you better off just staying away from it. I, and, what, I mean, I'll tell you the story about yeah. the mussels. Uh, we had gone to a, a, a restaurant, and my son says, Dad, try Linguini with mussels, that, and I had one little mussel, and I got so nauseous and sweating, and right. um, I thought I was going to pass out. Right. Fortunately, it passed. I just sat there. I couldn't. I, I didn't want to faint in front of all these people. Right. But it, it passed and went away. I've never tried. I can't even look at a mussel anymore. But I, uh, that's what I got. That had nothing to do with the gout. It just right. was a bad reaction. So, so you know, this is very important, and you know, sweating and feeling of passing out means you're getting dizzy. Mm -hmm. The dizziness is the alma mater. That is the symptom where you're about to have a collapsing event. And in a nutshell, what you can think is you feel dizzy or lightheaded when the blood doesn't flow to your brain. Mm -hmm. And if you have allergic reaction, your blood to, starts to lose, ooze out inside the body so dizziness is a very grave symptom and yeah. no, you know, it doesn't matter that you don't want to pass out in front of the people. Right. But nothing you can really do to stop the process, you were just lucky 
that you stopped eating in the right time mm-hmm. and that was fine. But it doesn't mean that next time it won't happen. Sure. So dizziness, lightheadedness, sweating, skin rashes, swelling, tightness of the chest, they're all the symptoms. And by the same token, people with seafood allergy don't even have to eat seafood. You go in a restaurant in a red lobster, mm-hmm. okay, and you're eating a salad there. And I'm sitting next to you and I'm having these mussels who are steamy, steamy and cooked come to me mm-hmm. and you can have a aroma about it. You go to a market where they sell fish, you don't have to see, you can just smell it. So smell alone is a lot of protein in the air and that can bring an allergic reaction. I had heard that. Yep, that is very much the case. So I actually tell each of my patients that, well, you know, if you're allergic to it, Breathing it in. Just think about this. I always give lecture and I always say that if you're allergic to cat, yeah, yeah, you wheeze in a room with a cat, but you don't eat a cat to have that. So, in other words, think about that. You don't have the smell, the breathing, mm-hmm. and the dander of the cat can cause you problem in the lungs. Mm-hmm. Same with the steam of the seafood, raw and cooked, can cause you that. You know, um, I think it's my mom that uh, when she gets around our cat, her eyes will get fun so, and sure. sweat, swell up and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And just from being around it, so she's yeah. not even petting it. Right, exactly. I mean, because, you know, it's all in the air. Because cat sheds dander. Yes. Dander goes on the wall, on the cloth, in the couch, and with the AC and the heating, it blows in the room. So you, you just sense it, lands on your eyes and the skin, so she's have a reaction there. Yeah. Very good injection. All this thing we're talking about is very easy to do. You walk in my office, I will do the test on you, and within an hour you will know exactly what you're allergic to. What, what kind of, t- like a blood test? Or no, it's not blood test. Blood test actually I downplay and discourage, because blood test has what we call a very false detection rate which is not accurate uh-huh. and very low negative predicted value it doesn't tell you if you're not allergic to something so what do you do so we do skin test and in the skin test there is the protein of clam for instance yeah we get that molecule uh, an extract we put on your uh, on your skin on the back where it's more sensitive then we we'll, you'll have a reaction like mosquito bite that is your body fighting with the minuscule of the molecule of that. Yeah. That is one millionth of the time what you ate in the mouth. And then you react to that, we know in the office right there. Yeah. So people see that their body is reacting, it's very accurate. And I actually see a lot of patients, like for instance, I have patients who have eaten shrimp when they were age 15, and now they are 50. And they are not allergic to anymore, although they are not eating it. So it works both ways. I clear a lot of people to eat food which they think they are allergic to and I ask a lot of people not to eat any category of the food should they be allergic to that. So the skin testing is very good, immediate, quick, not like waiting and doctor calling you back in 30 minutes in, in, a, in a day or two day or two weeks before you leave the office you will know and then we will we will we tell you what needs to be done with that. Do you um like if say if I came to you and and you find that I am allergic to dogs or cats or whatever, yeah. is there a um, a shot or a medication that you would give? Exactly, me? allergy shots are very good. If you have nose, recurrent sinus problems, asthma or skin rash, um, or feeling dizzy, sometimes people just feel unwell. That's why you call hay fever. Like you feel like fluey when yeah, there's yeah. no flu around, then uh, hay and mold, the injections we can give it to you and we can make your body not be allergic to them. So they are very effective treatment, 80% people, 80% of the cure rate for that, for the time we give you the allergy shots. So that is very good and I think, you know, we, we see people, if you treat people with allergy injections, your progression from nose and sinus to your lung can be stopped as well. So, uh, so that is very, you know, very effective treatment, and we we do that, and we do be doing it here. I see that uh, on your on your uh, card here. Yeah. That, uh, um, that you have, Doc, is um, you mentioned eczema. Yeah, eczema is skin problem. So a lot of people who have chronic skin issues, their skin never gets better, and they're always having. And garden variety medications are not working for it. 
more in children but also in adults a lot of time food you eat can cause reaction on the skin as we were saying you may have skin rash mm -hmm. so you may have uh, if you ate clam they are kind of people who may have a flare up of their skin on the leg and, and the arms mm -hmm. not passing out full flesh so we can treat that condition a lot of those have food allergies and a lot of those also have environmental allergies like cat dander landing on your right. skin or dust mite landing on it or more landing on it so the most recent indication for allergy shot is also for that i actually just saw a, a guy a very sad story he's very nice uh, man, around 40 he has very severe skin quite severe skin and so much so that his eyes are involved because he's rubbing them all all the time mm -hmm and uh, he cannot go to his job because his skin looks really bad. So, uh, and he's been seeing all kind of doctors over time, and I just so happened to saw him, and you know, uh, this is a, a very nice guy, but has problem. I'm gonna give him a trial of allergy shot to see if we can fix that because he was highly allergic, literally to everything I checked on. Really? So, yeah, so I'll be, that'll be very good actually. I took his pictures, and uh, I'll, I'll let the people know how it goes with that. Yeah. So skin condition and eczema is uh, can also come from allergies. So if you have rashes comes and goes on you and they have mystery, or you have swelling of your hands or lips or face, all of a sudden you're sitting and doing nothing, all of a sudden this is all allergic reaction of one sort or other. And then we can uh, try to do the detective work for you, find out what you are and what, what, um, what you have. I have a lot of these patients, this is called angioedema or urticaria, recurring swelling, rashes, tongue swelling, mouth swelling, lips, face, yeah, yeah. We, we can figure it out and we can make life 90% easier for these folks. 90%? 90%. What's the name of the, and I'm, I'm slipping my mind yeah. right now, the, the uh, condition where you're, 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 it's... Psoriasis? Psoriasis. Yeah, psoriasis is a autoimmune condition which is not because of allergy. And in psoriasis what happens is you got uh, usually in here, in the elbow bone, okay or you can get on the face or the neck or in the crotch area or one part of the skin but it doesn't, doesn't spread out that is not to do with allergy directly that is a condition which is treated best by the dermatologist so you would not you know so rises i won't handle but i mean you know i can give some medications to patch it but that's not my expertise dermatologists will do a better job okay, okay. But eczema, you know, flare up, dry, flaky skin all over the place, you're itching all the time, you see rashes comes and go, you go to play, you sweat, you break out with a rash, right. some people pass out while playing because the allergic reaction is severe. Those are the things I could help you with. Okay, okay. Um, latex allergies. Yeah. What, the, what does that Yeah, mean? what latex means is, you know, as we all know, latex glove and latex powder very high incidence of allergies who use material containing latex powder so healthcare workers actually because they have to put the gloves yeah, and take yeah. care and, and patients who get catheterized all the time are uh, urinary incontinence or people have multiple surgeries and some uh, some devices implanted at those if you have more than four surgeries the incidence of latex sensitization goes high and there's a lot of food like banana for instance or kiwi, or avocado, or um, chestnuts. These all have what we are saying, cross reactivity. So latex allergy could be made worse by some food allergy, or if you are allergic to latex, you should avoid some food as well. Really? Yeah. So that, that is, for that condition, there is no cure, but it's good to know what you have, and then we can clear you for that, or tell you what uh, what else to avoid. Um, you might have answered this question for me before, but. I've for those that might have missed it. Sure. Asthma, do you ever get better from asthma? You know, asthma is not one condition, it's called syndromes. So there are many kinds of asthma, and this is what I typically tell people, very rare to grow out of asthma. It's a chronic condition, which goes in remission, so to say. You can think of leukemia mm -hmm. going in remission. What happens is that asthma is a problem with your airway. And airway is called trachea, which is a straw where you breathe from. Mm -hmm. um, now, if, if you were pet, uh, 10 year old, your trachea size is small. Mm -hmm. And if you have allergic reaction, it will swell up. So you will have very small opening. And when you're breathing through the straw, that's what people feel with asthma, then you cannot breathe right. 
Now what happens is when you become 25 year old, mm -hmm. your body size is three times what you were 10 and your trachea size is also two to three times. So it's this bigger now. Mm -hmm. Now if it is this bigger and you're still having allergic reaction, you will still swell, but you still have enough passageway for air to go by. So then at age 25, a lot of people feel, I don't have asthma anymore. Yeah. But everybody's lungs start to go down with age. That's mm -hmm. normal for body, whether you smoke or not. Mm -hmm. Smoking accelerates deterioration of your lung faster. But even in me, I don't smoke. My lungs have also gone down when I was 20. So what happens to these patients when they come 40, 45? Now their lungs have gone down and they start to having symptoms of asthma again. And then they say, you know what? I had till I was age 10. Now I'm age 40. I don't have it anymore. So it came back on me. And the problem is that if you were seeing doctor all this time, the medication can make your lung growth better and patch the disease nicely. When your airway becomes from elastic to plastic, plastic meaning they cannot be dilated, they just stay fixed. It's a problem nobody can, uh, so there's a big push and that's one of the reasons the branch was created with this that you can see from childhood to any age and you don't have to switch or f transfer the doctor to doctor for it. That oh, a pediatrician will not see you or internal right. medicine will see you. So people don't grow out of asthma. Every week I'll pick up one or two patients in my office who have no problem with breathing, but when you do a breathing test, they're breathing out of one lung, not two. And the, the, the main thing is we abuse your body, so to say. God gave us two lungs. You don't need two. You need one. So as long as you have half of each lung working, you won't see any problem. Mm -hmm. And so people, when they start to perceive the problem, because their one lung or significant portion of both lungs have gone down, now they see it. So that is a myth. I think asthma should be treated, picked early. There's big thrust from academy to pick kids with asthma continue treating them with long time. Unfortunately, the most recent medical trials show that if you stop treatment of asthma, it's not a cure, it will come back, but it allows your lungs to continue to be healthy and not do ongoing damage, it prevent you from plasticity. So asthma is very much, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a specialist for asthma of any age, pregnant or non-pregnant, mm -hmm. cat-induced, pollen-induced, or no triggers for it, we, we can do that. And I would suggest if you have asthma, you should definitely go and be seen. Lot of asthma, pediatric more so than adult, have allergies as a trigger, and you need to be really worked out to know what your triggers are, and you can try to do something so can you avoid those triggers. I know when my, and in, in, in everything you said is exactly right on. Uh, my son had asthma as a boy, little boy. Now that he's 40 years old or whatever, um, in, in, in probably since in his 20s, he hasn't had that problem. So he figures he's over right. with it. Right. But I can see what you're saying now because you explained it rather well. You, that opening is bigger now. Right. And right. Uh, unfortunately, he may have problems as he gets, old, gets older. Yeah. Uh, asthma is most highest incidence of asthma is in Olympic players. Really? Athletes. Because if you think about it, they are the one who needs both engines going full throttle all the time. Mm -hmm. Me and you are working 25% of lungs by sitting and talking and seeing patients. Right. So people who exercise and put them to the stress will only find if their machine is having problem or not. So highest incidence of exercise induced asthma is in athletes. Very high incidence. Well, they, the Browns, Cleveland Browns, picked up a player. I don't know if it was Trent Richardson or somebody they picked up that was a high-profile athlete, and it came out that he suffered from asthma. Right. And so I'm thinking, this isn't good. I mean, will he be able to play? Well, apparently there hasn't been a problem because he played. But right, you know. Uh, I mean, you can control this condition very well. You know. Okay. So there's the, another thing because this is the Lake Erie area. People who like to scuba dive. With asthma, they can have an attack down under. Mm. That is a big problem. So I would really urge people who, who are into water sports, scuba diving particularly, should come and see the specialist so that they know appropriate way of handling it. So um, uh, I think, uh, you know, it's a syndrome. There's a lot of myth about it. 
And other area I want to quickly touch upon is the drug allergies. Mm -hmm. If anybody has any drug allergies, of say penicillin is the most common, mm -hmm. and I, have, I see a lot of patients and I'm running a specialty clinic and clearing a lot of patients with that. Because if you have drug allergy when you were age 10 and now you're age 30, 40, 50, very good chance you may have not had true drug allergy. If I work patients with penicillin allergy, 95 plus percent of them are not allergic to penicillin and can take that. So the doctor don't have to prescribe you big gun antibiotics mm -hmm. for this. So drug allergy of any card uh, and anybody in the audience who has a laundry list that I'm allergic to this and this and this and this and this and then you have sickness, go to doctor and doctor doesn't is struggling to give you medication, I can help them taking most of figuring out what is truly allergic, what is truly not allergic and what you can safely do and then your treating doctor can with confidence prescribe you medicine you're not truly allergic to. So that's why um, like if you're at the dentist and in the Sure. They ask, are you, are you allergic to amoxicillin or penicillin? Right. Or lidocaine. Or lidocaine, yeah. yeah. I had a, a lady come from Geneva recently and I'm doing that lidocaine work for her that she passed out. She had big allergic reaction to lidocaine. Very rare to have true lidocaine allergy. It's probably something mixed with that medicine like adrenaline or something that uh -huh. causes the problem. So drug allergy. Uh, uh, it's a good business for me because a lot of people have it, but they really true don't have so I can really help them a whole lot by taking it out. Okay. And nobody will do a challenge is what we do in here. Even down Cleveland, a lot of people don't do, but you know, I'm going to run big clinics for these challenges for food. Peanut, if you're not allergic to peanut, you will be able to eat peanut. If you're not allergic to seafood, you will be able to eat seafood. If you're not allergic to penicillin, you will be able to take penicillin. Medication. You know, when, when, when we were kids, I, I don't remember peanuts being a problem, but now it, it seems to be a major concern. It is. And, uh, you know, I don't have, we have enough time on this show today, but incidence of allergies is going higher and higher because the world is, or this part of the world is very hygienic, very clean. So your body have extra ammunition, if you will. Uh -huh. So they are turning more and more to have immune and autoimmune, uh, allergy and autoimmune problems. Okay. 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 Well. So uh, yeah. So you know, allergy shots very good, very effective treatment. Asthma and allergy goes hand in glove. If you got one or other, we can stop the progression of the disease. I'm really here all three days of a week. And I'm looking forward to create a zone of excellence for allergy immunology service. Nobody should leave this county and this area to go anywhere else for these, these services. Excellent. And and to get a hold of your office would be 994-7666? Yeah, or 994-6969-6969. That okay. is the central scheduling number. Okay. And uh, if anybody hears that, you know, the wait time, you know, I'm, I'm up to 10, 12 days booking time, my goal really is to get the patient early so we can investigate and work on. So anybody has problem, you know, have them have a hospital tell me and I'll work around it to make sure that I don't want to have very long waiting list for these patients. Sure. And, and I appreciate the fact that you, you'll leave that office that day knowing what your allergy R is. Right away. It's immediate testing. Yeah. And uh, when you see, I have yet to see pet somebody saying I'm allergic to my cat. Every day I see patients. They say oh, I'm allergic to pet's cat but not mine. Okay, but when you do the test and they have this big of a reaction, it's an eye opener for them and it, the testing has a different connotation to it because reading you a number of the blood, oh you know you have to have level 4 or 5 doesn't mean the same. If you're hurting and itching, your skin is bothering you for 4 days, then people see you know what, really there's something to it mm -hmm. and it is for you better and I'm not saying you have to get rid of your cat, we can actually give you effective treatment to reduce the allergen and give you a shot to make your body change. Is it because they're denying that their cat is not make them I, Everybody denies, you know, I, I, think, <laughs> I deny that I'm, I'm not fat, I'm not very active. I go on a jog, go five, so I'm out of breath too because I don't do physical activity. Yeah. Self-denial is a human nature uh -huh. and, you know, that is in, inbuilt in all of us. Right. But, uh, but I mean, you know, point is that, you know, what you can control is inside your home. You cannot control nature. Right. So. If we can find your allergic to mold, which may be in your basement, or dust mite, which is in your bed, or animals, we can tell you what you can do. And if you cannot do, it's okay. We can give you effective alternative therapies, in, such as allergy shots, to fix the problem. Okay. Your quality of life should be better. One last thing before I let you go. Yeah. You probably should not sleep with your pets. 
Oh, definitely not. And you see, know, unfortunately, that, both mine jump in bed when I'm... You know. No, you know, that is one thing I tell them. Actually, you know, I'm happy you brought it. This is the only one thing I ask pet owners to do. I ask them to shut their bedroom door or put a spring on the door. So when you are not in the room, the pet is not in the room. Mm -hmm. Because when you sleep in the bedroom, the dander is flying all over yeah. the room. And when they come in bedroom with you, they leave their dander in your mattress and in your clothing. Mm -hmm. And you, so one thing I would suggest people to do is to have a distance that keep your bedroom door closed, have an air cleaning, cleaner or purifier in your bedroom so the allergen load goes down mm -hmm. and have the pet out of the bedroom. Okay. You know, that is, I think that is good for you. Uh -huh. And a lot of people have the problem, they have come to me because now they are wheezing with it. They have significant issues. Mm -hmm. So before it gets to that point, that is the whole point of preventive medicine to get up early in there and clean it out for them. But absolutely not. They should Do you not. have pets? No. You, you know, pets? You know I, I didn't bring the tie today, but my pet is on my ties. You know? <laughs> and, and it's like, it's, I love that, but you know, it's like grandkids. You know, it's better to have somebody else pet go for a walk and jog and give it back to them. You know? That's so, right. That's right. <laughs> a lot of work. You can go on vacation or nothing else. You know? I fight with the kids every day. That's yeah. one thing my wife didn't convince me to do is to buy a pet. Yeah. Because I think, you know, Let's have more kids. It's better because same work and time you invest in them. You can't go to India or any place or Hawaii for vacation. Right, right. Who's going to take care of it? And That's a problem. It, it is a problem. It is and, a problem. And uh, people have no problem paying for their pet's care. But you have copay high. I have a lot of patients complain about, oh, you know, so much copay, but $1,000 for my pet comes out of pocket, no problem. You know, it's, it's <laughs> That's how true is that. It's, it's very interesting. Hey, very interesting interview today. I really appreciate it. We, sure. did, we went 35 minutes without a break, and I, and I appreciate it. Come sure. back and see us. Absolutely, I will do. I do a lot of immunology, Pat. So, you know, this is allergy and asthma time, so I want to get that message out. But I also want to leave people to think that if truly you are sick of getting sick, and you keep getting sick all the time, I ran the biggest immune deficiency clinic in the city of Cleveland. And I have first patient of Ashtabula here. I have a couple of patients coming from uh, my previous job from Cleveland here. But I'm giving patients, I'm finding it out, and I'm giving them infusions to boost the immune system. Okay. That problem comes in fall and winter, so I'll be back uh, that time, okay. not sooner. Okay, maybe okay. even then we can uh, spend some time on that peanut thing. <clears throat> oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much, Doc. Appreciate it.